Live from the Mandalay Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Insight 2014. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone here live in Las Vegas for IBM Insight. This is theCUBE where we go out to the events, extract the ceiling from the noise. I'm John Furrier. My co-host Dave Vellante and our next guest is Glenn Finch, global leader of big data analytics at IBM. 25 years in banking, uh, you've been around the block, but big data is certainly driving a lot of value. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, John. So, hey, Dave, thanks. So, so the surveys are out there. We want to talk about a survey you're, you're um, getting behind, and, and really that teases out the big thing, which is, and, and, and Kobielus was on earlier, um, you know, and he's like, okay, speed is the key advantage. That's something that's, um, in some of your work you've done, you're kind of teasing out the key trends, um, speed seems to be number one. Can you share some thoughts on this new survey? Sure. So uh, every year for the last six years, um, we publish this survey. I got to tell you, that, you know, in Vegas to be talking about the number six, it, it's not a great day to be talking about. Anyway, so uh, just six, add one. Yes, yeah, that's seven. right. I, I want to get to seven, seven <laughs> next year. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, so six, we want to get to game seven. That's right. That's right. <laughs> six years uh, doing this. Uh, last year, everybody was talking about value. This year. Everybody's talking about speed. And, and not just a little bit of speed, but radical change in speed. Big speed. Big speed. Big data, right? big speed. But yeah, what's, what's goofy though, last year everybody was talking about volumes of data, right? Now they're talking about velocity of data. And you know, in, in the consulting business, you know, when things move a percent or two, that, that's like, it puts people to sleep, right? This year, we're talking about stuff moving 20, 30, 40 percent, big swings around this whole concept of velocity. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah, totally. Well, so let me ask you, how were they defining sort of value? How were they you know, quantifying value? What was it? Saving money, making money? What was value last year? That's a, that's a great question, Dave. Um, so, I, I wouldn't say that the, the metrics have changed around value from year to year, right? You, you kind of have this, this you know, split uh, last year, 75% of value definition was around customer acquisitions, revenue growth, cross-sell, and 25% was around operations. Big change this year, 53%, so the 75 goes down to 53% with customer, and the piece on operations grows from about 25% to 40. So you've got a little bit more cost reduction creeping back in this year, mm -hmm. right? But the, the, the wild thing that hit this year, 63%, 63% of all the clients said they're getting value from data projects within a year. So no more two year, three year big data warehousing projects, 63% say that they're getting it in year. Now massive, I, I massive saw that shift. Yeah, it, it, and now our, our data shows a, a couple interesting things. One is that there's a schism actually between the IT people and their definition of value and the business people. Right. Are you seeing a sort of similar dissonance or are you seeing more alignment? You know what's interesting, what's starting to happen is with, with big data where people aren't taking two years to build a warehouse, right? Where, where you're, you're throwing data into a reservoir and you're, you're coming up with findings now actually that, that schism is closing somewhat, right? Because the guys you know, that are on the line of business can see that you're answering their questions quick. Because there's no way you can get to value in less than a year if you're not answering business questions. Mm -hmm. Big big difference, right? So is value it, is, the, is, the, is the proxy for, I'm interested in the topic. Speed isn't a proxy for this stuff happening. Right. Um, what's next after speed? Uh, <laughs> outcomes, like results? I mean, so what, what's year seven? Let's go to, your mind next year. Yeah. What do you want to see in next year's report? If speed's today, that means I'm buying in-memory flash, I'm doing some integration, I got some apps coming out there, I'm probably developing in real time, focusing on real time stuff, right. engagement. Okay, got that. Can yeah, we I do speed for a few years? Yeah, I, I, well, so John, you, know, you hit it on this whole thing about outcomes, right? The, the concept of doing outcome-based work changes everything. 
so that instead of committing to Project 32, you know what I'm saying, we commit to a change in a business outcome, right? Yeah, increased uh, sales right. or, you know, or, ad budget reduction or something. Yeah, so right, the, not the, completing Project 32. Right, right, right not completing Project 2, but to, to change a fundamental business driver, right? So we, we had a couple clients on stage with us today. One of them, they're going to drive hundreds of millions of dollars of benefit by shrinking how much fraud hits them. Hundreds of millions of dollars in fraud. It's an insurance company, right? They're paying out too much money in claims because people are doing That's a good outcome. Right, it's, I mean, a, it's, it's not a bad outcome. outcome. Right, but, but back to the speed thing, we're doing that. In fact, we went live today in less than eight months. So the, the concept of moving quick and driving outcomes, that's what we're seeing. Now, you know the goofy part. There's one thing we didn't talk about in this study. 7% of the respondents said that we're spending time on the office of the CFO. Now this is the goofiest darn thing, I think, so you asked me what I expect to see next year. So, you know, I was on CNBC this year, we released our CFO study, CFO studies says CFOs are spending 250% more time integrating data. I'm thinking, you better go to the place where the money is and help that person, right? Go help the CFO. So I think we're going to see more outcomes and I think we're going to see more stuff in the office of the CFO. You can appreciate well, this joke. Steve Herrod, who was, used to be the CTO of VMware, now is a venture capitalist, said, why do people rob banks? Because that's where the money that's is. That's where the money is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, it's like so a, back to business outcomes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you work on first? Where's Where the, the money? money? Right. <laughs> well, and that's what I was thinking, like it's the CFO for God's sakes, right? You're going to go ask the CFO to fund a project but you're only spending 77% of your time with the CFO. It, it, there's a, you're biting the hand that's feeding you there. Yeah. So I, I think we're going to see some pretty big So you well, think that data is going to level the playing field for what I call the bullshit projects. You know, when you say Project 32, right. there's a handful of stuff going on that's kind of like, okay, why are we doing that? Why are resources being committed to it? So internal analytics are also important. Well, or the metrics of, the su of success in Project 32 is, hey, it works. Right. The, the, the server light is green. It, exactly. We're done. Right. Right, and the business right. guy says, well, what did I get? Right, and right. That's, that's, the the, that's the difference between IT and the business yes. unit. And that's the thing that's starting to draw business people and technology people more together because they can see outcomes from some of these you know, quick little mercenary kind of analytical projects, right? Not the big two year, $100 million, see you later and hope. But I gotta, right? no, so I got to ask yeah. you about the, the CFO. Yeah. Is the CFO, the office of the CFO qualified to do that data integration or does, is some Certainly in financial services, you're seeing this chief data officer emerge. Yeah. Who's responsible for data integration? That's where the money is. We yeah. see it in our surveys too. Data integration, number one tool set and challenge for big data practitioners. Right. How to integrate the data, data quality, data governance. Who owns that? Yes, what an awesome question. So, you know, this whole concept of the office of the CDO, the CFO, first of all, I'm not going to say that somebody is not qualified to do something, because I don't want to whack at any you know, CFOs out in the audience, but let okay. me say this, let me say this. But if okay. I'm a CFO, I'm not sure I want to own No, no, that. you don't want yeah, to, yeah. right? You, you have had to build this cottage industry of fixing data as a CFO, because nobody's doing it for you, right? So when, when somebody's spending two and a half times, more time doing something, mm. think about the CFO, for God's sake, they shouldn't be spending time there, right? So you see- And maybe it made sense post Enron. It did. But now, right? Right. different animal. It, it doesn't. So, that's why you're starting to see a lot of the, the chief data officer roles pop up, right? And you're starting to see a lot of people question, how, how can I integrate all this stuff that I just spent all this money putting in? Because there's a lot of SAP projects out there, a lot of Oracle projects, a lot of those kind of big financial transformation things. You would think that the amount of time integrating data would be going down. Mm. And it's not, right? So that, that tells me there's a real opportunity. And because the amount of data is exponentially growing, the right. metrics of success are changing. Right. Like you said, it's velocity now, it's not just amount. Yeah, unbelievable. Now, the office of the CFO, what, what, we, what we're seeing them start to do is to look deeper. You know, data breeds data, right? So yeah. you, you see the CFO starting to look for more and more things within the data. So, they now start to have some level of data integration and they say, oh, I wonder what's causing this. So they dig deeper, mm -hmm. 
Well, to dig deeper and find causality, they got to go get more data, yeah. right? So it's, a, it, it's like a giant ongoing mining exercise. So Glenn, I got to ask you, back yeah, to yeah. my question earlier, because this is a good, good tie back into yeah. some of the things I was doing about the, the, the green light being on Project 32, yeah. <laughs> server works, right. yeah, we're done. Speaks to what Wikibon is coming out in, in a different market mm -hmm. in the Hadoop space, mm -hmm. where IT grades themselves, they're doing pretty good. They yeah. rolled out the POC and it's up and running and they give themselves high grades, yet the business unit says, no, you suck. I mean, we need more value. So, that's been going on in IT and business for Forever. since computing's been on. Since and certainly I've been client, in IT. Yep. Yeah, 25 years you've been in banking. Certainly mm -hmm. banks are uh, doing a lot of cutting edge. That's where the money is. They got to right, protect right. it. So you see an early indicator. What are you seeing as the way to arbitrate between those two groups? What's the key uh, force right now that you're seeing in the customer environments where people are making it work? It's certainly a collision course. It has to be a team effort. That's clearly coming out of the data we're seeing from all the conversations. Is that hey, we got to get along. It's a team effort. Uh, the cloud helps. There's a lot of leverage more creativity, right. so how do they make that work? What are the successful use cases, and don't name names, but you can just say success, and where it's not working? Yeah, so you know, one of my favorite stories um, is you know, with the leading coffee company we've worked with. It has same store sales problem, right? Now, they thought their same store sales problem had to do with food products, so they went out and fundamentally changed all the food products that they had. <laughs> Change the right, menu. Right, go, go buy a bakery, <laughs> right? I mean, it's, it's not the coffee, it's definitely not the coffee. For God's sakes, I, I drink so much of that stuff every day for this their particular coffee. It was sacred cow, coffee. it the is, sacred right. cow, yeah. So, but, but, so they went and bought a bakery, didn't change things, and then they said, okay, we don't know where to go, so let's pull a bunch of data together. So we pulled weather data and economic data and y you name the data, right? To get that done, you can't have IP, IT and data people there. You got to have the business people, everybody's staring at the data, looking for what it's about to say. That, that you, you know, remember when Agile was like so cool when you're building client, remember that whole? Sure. Th that's kind of what big data is right now because everybody's moving in a very agile manner. If in a space of a few weeks, you can put data into a reservoir and start finding things it's unbelievable. Now, guys, I, I got a question back for you. What do you think the single greatest predictor of same store sales for this coffee company was? What, what do you think? Uh, weather. Weather? <sighs> what was the problem again? Same, same, yeah, store, same store, store sales. sales. Same store, you say weather. Okay. Okay, I I'll help you out. I'd say. It, go ahead. I'd say quality. It was the barista. The person, it? It was the barista. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the person making the coffee. Call. It's the service. It is, but it, yeah. so it's that experience, personal, exactly. The personal experience. The personal experience. They didn't know that. The data. How they greeted, that. how they exit. Right. Did they get, what, what, did, what, they have a nice smoothing yeah. experience? Dave, hey, John, you hey, want the latte? No you want whether or not they smile. Right, right. They know their name, you right. know. Yeah, sure. so, so yeah. I think what you're seeing is this kind of scrum-like environment, right? Where everything's moving very quick. But how do they do that? How do people, because that's what, I think people see that as like, you know, that's the value. Right. Now the speed game kicks into your survey. Right. Okay, okay, now let's make that happen. Right. You know, is it like, a, you know, throw the holy water on the magic, uh, you know, process? It's really a people issue, right? So how does that leadership get the two groups working together? Have you seen any successful formulas? I think, I think when you have sponsorship from the top down to do something like this, right, as compared to the bottom up, you have people showing up game on, game up, ready to go, yeah. and, and just looking for new things, looking for cool, fun things that are going to happen, right? So approach, right. how they approach their job. Right, it's, it's, so it's, it's, it's about approach and, and, and showing up expecting something is going to be good. Not trying kind of to like the Giants the beat the Royals. They show up and keep on <laughs> pounding away, <laughs> right. scrapping right. away, right. you know. Yeah. I don't know if in Washington D.C. it's even harder, yeah. okay, I getting mean, the Nationals yeah. to play. But, yeah. um, but getting people to show up thinking that something's going to go right is a whole lot different than getting people showing up thinking that 27 things are going to go wrong if they can just figure out how to put a stop to this, right? But it's, it's daunting when, when the data starts to speak. That's when new levels of leadership got to step up again. Share, so it's unbelievable. Share what's going on in the banking financial sector, because obviously sure. that's a great early adopter on all things engagement. So that's, I mean, all things in tech. They're buying sure. the latest and greatest, Ferrari, glass drives, right. drives, you right. name it. Right. They, and they got security issues, and believe me, they got to protect the money. So there's certainly a lot of in, in innovation going on, bleeding edge. Yeah. What do they view security and engagement, those two separate topics, security, clear, mandate. Engagement's a new concept, because now the mobile consumer it used to be 
my bank experience was, how great the lobby was when I walked in, the teller, right. if you will. Right. Now I have an app. Are right, the chairs comfortable? Now I have an online app, and I can right. deal and do my online banking. Now there's fraud. Oh my God, who's right. fishing? Talk about the dynamics in the financial sure. sectors. Yeah, so John, you know, you you hit uh, the topic of fraud. Clearly, data finding data. Uh, this whole concept of context computing, right? Data's moving so quickly now that we don't have the ability to know what this piece of data is meaning, right? Especially in fraud, especially in risk, when you can start putting together disparate, seemingly unconnected data together, you find massive amounts of value around fraud, around risk. Now, that's kind of trying to find bad things that are happening you can take that same approach to find the good things, right? Mm -hmm. So back to your concept of customer experience, you can know what people want and serve it up to them in a, a dynamically deployed app world in, in real time. So it, it, you've got data for good, data for bad, right? It, the same techniques kind of flow and drive through both things. So financial institutions are using it, as you, know, as you rightly put, to protect the money, around risk and fraud, and then to drive consumer engagement. But the problem is, you got to get it linked first, right? Because just, there's so many bunny holes, there's so much noise in the data, right? You could run down the wrong path and do it, and just irritate a bunch of people. Well, you look at what Apple, what's going on with Apple Pay, oh, right? Yeah. Elbowing their way into financial services, yeah. but everybody wants the data. Yeah, but I think yeah. first data's power in that back end, so you get, they're not really, they're just, UI, putting a UX on front right. of that. So, right. I mean, mm, direct business model, I mean, that's the web. I mean, the yeah. internet started with the web, now yeah. we're in social business. It's changing. It's, <laughs> it's complete changing very the quickly. leveling of the playing field thanks to things like Amazon and uh, Blue Mix and all the stuff going on. So, right. um, just throw out the projected for next year. We're going to end the segment here, getting pressed right. on time, getting the hook here. Yeah. Um, Glenn, I feel tell the hook. us. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> got the, we, got, we <laughs> actually got the hook. Right, no, yeah. but I want to stretch that's it out. Right, I yeah. want you to say seven years out, the seven year itch is coming for you on the next survey. Right, right. What do you anticipate? Speed again? I mean, there's going to be four years of speed. Is that build out? Is there going to be more speed than now let's get organizational behavior? Or what are you, what are you anticipating, if you had to guess? So I, I think we're going to see speed, again, because it, it's just come into the fray, right? I think secondly, you know, you hit on it, we are starting to get so fast that the human dimension is unable to cope. So we're going to see a bunch of folks trying to figure out how to get people to move as fast as the data and the analytics. And then third, I think you're going to see a couple of those segments, the office of the CFO, I think you're going to see them come into the fray where, where they have not been before, right? Yeah. The very, very important The stakes are high, they got to come yeah, into, the, into the kitchen. They've got to, absolutely. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And we would tell the, the CDO concept is that there's also compliance issues too, right? right. I mean, it's like, oh my God. Man. You know, we yeah. can go another half hour on that. We could, and you know, the, the office of the CDO, clearly, you know, what, you know, five years ago, there were five of them. This yeah, yeah, year, right. there's 150, and you know, by a couple years from now, there'll be 250, mm -hmm. right? It is, it is the hottest job role right now, because people know they've got to go game up with that, right? So how that role plays in, how it's going to affect all these answers, we're going to see a lot of change. Creative, curiosity, good communication, that seems to be the skill set for big data. We are here doing that here on theCUBE, we're curious, we're communicating, and of course, we're creative, we're talking to all the great guests here at IBM Insights, just bringing all the data, sharing that with you. This is theCUBE, inside the Social Media Insight Go Center special presentation, amazing third, uh, experience, third screen, second screen, digital uh, experience here with an IBM uh, with their social media team. Uh, this is theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break.